This video contains the notes for section 3.7. 3.7 is um, about what we call related rates. Of course, derivatives are rates of change, so this is um, well situated in our chapter about derivatives. Um, so what does this mean? Well, I'm going to give you um, one of the classic examples to think about here, and we'll use that example to motivate um, our notes and how we approach problems like this. So imagine that a stone is dropped into a pond. You can imagine we're looking down on the pond here. And um, as the ripples go out, the ripple, like if just the, I mean, it might make successive ripples, but if we just look at like the first ripple that it made, just assume that it makes one initial ripple. We'll ignore what happens after that. So the ripple grows, right? I mean, you know this. You throw a rock in a pond, the ripple starts here, and then it moves out and gets bigger and bigger. So let's call the radius of the ripple r. Um, now, r in this case, it's not, it's, it's a special kind of variable here. Because this is a situation that's changing over time, um, we could talk about the rate at which r is changing over time. For example, let's say we know that the radius of the ripple is moving, or changing, I should say, not moving, is changing at, um, oh, let's see, how much do you think a ripple would grow every second? Maybe uh, 10 centimeters a second, something like that. So when you throw the rock in the pond, the ripple gets bigger and bigger, and the radius of the ripple might be growing. It has like a velocity, right? I mean, it's moving out. It's changing. The radius of the circle, which is getting bigger and bigger, is changing. It's changing at 10 centimeters per second. Well, in terms of calculus here, this is a derivative, right? This is a rate. Anything that's a rate can be understood as a derivative. It's the derivative of the radius with respect to time. It's dr dt. Just as if it were position, we've already talked about how position, um, the derivative of position with respect to time, dx dt, that's velocity, right? So this is just d, we called it r because it's a radius, so dr dt. It's like a velocity, and that's what it is. We happen to have uh, been given this piece of information, or we measured that. So um, this is dr dt. Well, what if we wanted to know how fast the area is changing? Hmm, well, I mean, certainly the area is changing over time, right? I mean, you throw the rock in the pond, and you have a little circle with a small area, and then it gets bigger, and it gets bigger. Um, and I think this is certainly not the answer we're looking for. This is how fast the radius is changing. And the area is related to this. This is the idea of related rates. The area depends on the radius, right? Um, so before we get into some kind of relationship between those, in calculus terms, um, if we want to know the rate, how fast is like a key word to tell you we're talking about a rate. How fast is the area changing? Well, that's what we're looking for. What do you think? Think about that for a second. Maybe pause for a second. We're talking about dA dt, right? This is the rate the area is changing with respect to time. Right? 
This is the rate the radius is changing with respect to time. So dA dt would be the rate that the um, area is changing over time. And of course, you know, when we just have a regular old dy dx, that's the rate that y values are changing with respect to x. It's a little bit more abstract, but it's the same idea. Um, now, to do a related rates problem, we need to find an equation that relates the variables we're interested in. So I'm interested in the radius of a circle and the area of a circle. So do we know an equation or relationship that relates radius and area of a circle? Do you? Of course you do. Yes. What is it? Well, it's just the area of a circle, right? Area equals pi r squared. That's the relationship, right? We know that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Um, so um, what do we do with that? Well, we're actually going to use calculus on this. We're going to take the derivative of this equation. Now, this is the, the thing that um, I think a lot of folks have trouble with. Related rates have kind of a reputation as being one of the more difficult kinds of derivative problems. But they're really not if you can get your head around this. In this situation, our ripple, because the ripple is growing and the radius is changing over time, and so is the area, it means that behind the scenes in this equation, as it relates to our growing ripple, behind the scenes in this equation, there's a hidden variable of time. This area, it's really changing with time. In other words, it's like it's a function of time, and so is the radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of this equation, but we're not going to take it with respect to r like as if that were the x over here, y equals pi x squared. That's not, the, um, that's not the variable that would be on the horizontal axis. Time is the variable that would be on the horizontal axis here. That's sort of behind the scenes governing how fast these changes are taking place. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to time. Seems like a weird thing to do because there's no t in here, but of course, you know, we're talking about ripples here, so time doesn't actually manifest itself in our still picture of what's happening here. But certainly, you would have to agree that both the radius and the area of the circle are changing with respect to time, right? So let's take that derivative and see what that looks like. What's the derivative of a with respect to time? Well, we actually already did that. We already talked about what that is. It's dA dt. It's just as if this were a y. When you take the derivative of y, you get dy dx. That's taking it with respect to x. Now we're taking the derivative of this with respect to time. So the derivative of area with respect to time is dA dt equal to... Now, pi is just a constant, so that's going to stay there. What's the derivative of r squared? Well, this is almost like the chain rule. It's If we just wanted the derivative of r, right, if that square wasn't there, then the derivative of r would be dr dt, right? But it's r squared, and we know the derivative of something squared is 2 times that something, right? The derivative of r squared is 2r, and there's the pi, that's just that constant there. The derivative of r squared is 2r, but the thing inside isn't a t, right? Our like secret variable that we don't see here is a t. So we know that the derivative of r is dr dt. So just like in the chain rule where that derivative of what's inside pops out, here a dr dt pops out. So let me talk you through that again. The derivative of a is dA dt. Of course, if a were the variable, that we were interested in. If it were t, its derivative would just be 1, right? But it wasn't just 1. It was like times the derivative of the a part, which is dA dt. And then likewise over here, the derivative of r squared is 2r, 
with the pi in there, constant, times the derivative of the r. Just like the derivative of a is dA dt, the derivative of the r is dr dt. Um, every time you do one of these problems, time is never going to show up in this equation. It's always going to be this hidden variable. And that means, just like a dA dt popped up here and a dr dt popped up here, the, um, there's not going to be any variable that you see where you're not going to get one of these. Every single quantity, every single variable in your original equation is going to get one of these in the rate equation. And now you can really see why this is called a related rate problem. Here's a rate, here's another rate, and this is the relationship between them. How fast is the area changing? Well, it's changing at 2 pi times the radius times the rate of change here. So let's uh, make our question a little bit more specific. Um, so how fast is area changing when the radius is equal to, oh, let's say 20 centimeters. And at this point, we just need to plug stuff in. Uh, think about what we're looking for. How fast is the area changing? That means we're looking for dA dt. Now here, hopefully, we don't have any more variables over here. Hopefully we know these things. So let's see, 2 times pi times, what's r? Well, we're looking for the rate when r is 20. So that's 20 times dr dt. And, well, look, we know that the radius of the ripple is changing at 10 centimeters per second. This is dr dt, right? This is dr dt times 10. And that is 2 times 20 is 40 times 10 is 400 pi. And uh, if you were careful with your units and you're uh, better than I am at keeping track of all the units in here, then you'd be able to see what the units here are. Or think about what this is. What is area measured in? Area is measured in square units. And our units here are centimeters. So this much must be square centimeters per, and we're talking about a rate, per our time unit is seconds. So the radius is changing at 400 pi square centimeters per second. When the radius of the ripple, when it's grown to 20, then the area is changing at 400 pi square centimeters per second. And again, worth noting that although the radius is changing at a constant rate, 10 centimeters per second, the area is not changing at a constant rate because it depends not only on dr dt, which is constant, but also on the radius, right? Um, if you want to look at the units here, this would have been centimeters 20 centimeters, and this would have been 10 centimeters per second. So that's the centimeters times centimeters, square centimeters per second. So if you keep track of that in here, it might help you get those units at the end there. All right, so in general, what's the procedure here? Not that I'm a big fan of procedures, but um, these, are, these can be more difficult problems. So here are the steps that I recommend. Step one, draw a picture. You're going to need it. Step two. And I, I should say, when we draw a picture, label the picture, right? With whatever variables, whatever things you know, whatever things you're interested in finding, right? Label with variables. And um, two, find a relationship, not a calculus relationship, just a relationship, an equation, like our area equals pi r squared in the last example. Find a relationship between 
your variables and other known quantities so for us that was um, area equals pi r squared right that's not calculus um, I'll also mention that this is almost always I'll say usually this is a relationship that comes from geometry. For example, sometimes the Pythagorean theorem is the relationship that does it for us. Sometimes it's like basic right triangle trig, so toa, sorry. Sometimes it's that kind of relationship. Um, sometimes it's um, area. Sometimes it's a volume formula. And you just have to let the problem um, dictate what relationship you're going to look for. Um, and I'm going to do another video with some classic examples of this type of problem. You can see how that plays out. Um, and then third, take the derivative. of your equation that you found in step two with respect to time. Again, t, time, is not going to show up in your relationship. It's that hidden variable. And that means that every time you take the derivative of any variable, any variable in here, that little d whatever dt is going to pop up da dt dr dt d whatever dt those are the rates right this is your related rate problems where we need those rates to be involved and then fourth and finally you plug in whatever information you have and then you just do a little algebra from there and solve hopefully uh, you'll have everything um, except for one quantity, and you can go ahead and solve for that. Okay, so those are the steps, and um, if you write those down, copy those into your notes, it uh, might be helpful to have them next to you as we go through the next, um, in the next video, a few examples of related rates problems.